What's up, it's Blake. I've got Intel's latest consumer-grade SSD here, the 510 series, codenamed Elmcrest, which is new for 2011. I have the 120 gigabyte model, and what I'm gonna be doing with it for this video is a quick unboxing. Then I'm gonna install it in my 2011 MacBook Pro. If you didn't see the video I made about that several weeks ago, I'll put a link to it right up here. After I get it installed, I'm gonna install OS X and then I'm going to repeat some of the tests that I did in the first video. I do want to make a couple quick observations before we get started. This will be the first upgrade I'm doing to the MacBook Pro. I think it's an important upgrade. SSDs are fast, they're silent, they consume less power, and they're becoming more and more reasonably priced all the time. I think it's a smart upgrade not just for new computers but for most computers made in the past several years. Uh, this computer in particular I think will notice a pretty big performance gain just because it's got an already great processor, 4 gigs of RAM, and the hard drive that's currently in it is only a 5400 uh, RPM hard drive, so this is a much better hard drive and I think that will make it uh, much faster. So I'm anxious to see what the outcome is going to be. The one thing I do want to say is that I have read online some people are having trouble with this particular 510 series SSD and these particular new 2011 MacBooks from Apple. So. I'm hoping that I won't run into any trouble, but we'll have to wait and see. So here it is for a quick unboxing. There's a seal on this side, but I'm not going to break it. I'm going to open it from this end. The drive itself. A Speed Demon sticker. A SATA cable. Two sets of screws, power adapter, tiny disc with uh, installation guide and warranty, some documentation, and a uh, adapter for installation in a 3.5 inch bay. Okay, so I've got the MacBook Pro flipped over. To get inside, you'll need to remove 10 very tiny screws, four at the top, four at the bottom, and one on each side. A couple notes, um, I was able to use a very tiny Phillips screwdriver like this. I'm not sure if other countries have different screws, um, but in the US, tiny Phillips screws and you'll need um, something that is tiny like this, preferably with a bigger handle because this is kind of difficult to uh, use this. But anyway, um, another thing, there are different length screws. These up here are a little bit longer than the rest, so keep track of um, which ones you remove from where. Once you get the back off, Inside looks pretty cool. This is the optical drive, the logic board with two fans, uh, memory, the battery, and the hard drive. To get the hard drive out, you're going to remove four black screws, two here and two here. Once you have these two off, you can take this little black part out like that and uh, use this little flap to pull on the drive and pull it up. Um, there's a little tiny black uh, cable that goes underneath here. You'll just need to carefully and gently remove from this side like that and then on the drive itself there are four screws that uh, are not Phillips screws I had to actually use a tiny um, it's not ideal but I used a tiny uh, Allen wrench to get these off so I'm gonna take these off and put the Intel drive in in just a minute Okay, I've got the Intel drive securely in place. Now I'm just going to put everything back together and we'll get started on the install of OS X. Okay, I'm at the screen to start installing OS X. I did pick a customized install. I unchecked printer uh, drivers to save 1.8 some gigabytes and I did check QuickTime 7 just because I want that. And I'm going to click install and I'm going to do a st um, start a stopwatch on my phone. And we'll see how long it takes. Okay, it just got done installing. It took 23 minutes and 50 seconds. Okay, I completed the first time setup and now we're gonna do a cold boot into a new user profile and see how long it takes. Most of the time booting up is spent at this gray screen. Uh, I did do a SMC reset and a PRAM reset and I also uh, selected the new drive as the target startup disk, just in case anybody's wondering about that.
and there it is just under 24 seconds I've done it several times and that's what it always comes up as so I've heard of better times but I think this is still pretty darn good for those who are interested you can see here in the Apple system profiler the negotiated link speed on the drive is 6 gigabits okay so the next test is installing Adobe Creative Suite 5 trial edition if you recall from the previous video, it took just over 16 minutes, so we'll see how long this takes. Okay, I just finished, and as you can see, it took 10 minutes on the nose, shaving a full 6 minutes off the install time with the old hard drive. Okay, so before I do the other tests, I think it's a great time to talk about the featured food for this video. Starburst Crazy Beans Jelly Beans. Each jelly bean has two flavors in one. These things are great. If you've ever seen that movie, uh, Blue Streak with Martin Lawrence, where he walks into the police station, dresses that pizza delivery guy, and he says not to keep candy around him because he'll chomp it up. That's the way I feel about these. Uh, if they're available to you, go out and get some. They're going to blow your mind. Okay, I've also installed Office 2011 already. I didn't show the install process on the other video, so I didn't do it here either, but it was even faster here. It took maybe just one or two minutes. Um, now what I'm going to do is I've restarted the computer, and I'm going to open some of the common programs that I opened before, starting with Excel. Very fast. Let's do Word. very fast PowerPoint same thing these office ones just open instantly and let's do uh, Photoshop very I mean it just comes right up yeah yeah trial Let's do Dreamweaver. Same thing, just comes right up. Let's do Premiere Pro. This one usually takes a little bit longer. There it is. Let's do App Store Instant. So I guess the moral of the story is most of the stuff that you're going to be working with is going to open up instantly. Um, last I'm going to do is just shut it down like I did last time. It's very fast shut down also. And there it's off. So there you have it. It's only been installed for a short time, but I really didn't have any problems installing it, and hopefully it will continue to run great. Um, in conclusion, I think an SSD upgrade is a really good idea, um, especially we've got new technologies uh, coming down the line like Thunderbolt and USB 3.0. You're going to want to be able to get the data off your computer and across that pipe as fast as possible, and in a portable machine like this, SSD is going to be the best way to do that. I hope this video was useful for some of you guys, and I encourage you to rate, comment, and subscribe. Uh, I am over 250 subscribers right now, so looking forward to 500 subscribers. I'm planning on doing some sort of a giveaway, so stay tuned for that, and thanks for watching.